primary active transport it against the chemical gradient the movement of the substance occurs against the concentration gradient so it is known as active transport it requires carrier proteins needs extra energy has vmax or the saturation in the transport process types primary active transport and secondary active transport in the primary active transport there is a sodium potassium pump calcium pump these are the examples of the primary active transport and in the secondary active transport there are two types co transport and the counter transport co transport means substance movement occur in a single direction both the substance will move in a single direction and uh, counter transport means the substance movement occur in the opposite direction so here the glucose amino acid transport with the sodium ions in the intestine or the kidney it is one of the example of the secondary active co transport now here the hydrogen ion with the sodium ion in proximal convoluted tubule of the kidney is the example of secondary active counter transport mechanism now what is the difference between primary active transport and secondary active transport in the primary active transport the energy is derived directly from the breakdown of the atp and in the secondary active transport the energy is derived secondarily from energy that has been stored in the form of ionic concentration differences between the two sides of a membrane simply inside the primary active transport the energy is derived directly from the breakdown of atp but in the secondary active transport the energy has been derived due to ionic difference between the or the across the cell membrane so this is the difference between primary and secondary active transport primary active transport for example sodium potassium pump most important it maintains sodium potassium concentration in the intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid it is also known as or it is also one of the example of electrogenic pump and it uh, helps in the regulation of cell volume and the pressure now what is the movement of the solutes which occurs when the sodium potassium pump is working so here you are seeing the example of the sodium potassium pump which pumps three sodium ions outside of the cell membrane and two potassium ion inside the cell membrane so here it is the inside of the cell membrane and this side it is the outside of the cell membrane so here you are seeing that there is a transportation of three sodium ions outside of the cell membrane and two potassium ions inside of the cell membrane and with the breakdown of atp for the energy purpose so here direct breakdown of the atp occurs and uh, energy has been provided for the working of this sodium potassium pump so it is known as primary active transport the same thing which occurring with the calcium ion the calcium ion moves from the low concentration gradient to the high concentration gradient via the primary active transport process this calcium ion binds with this carrier proteins and uh, once the atp has been break down and energy has been provided to this carrier protein the movement of the calcium ion occurs from cytoplasm to the extracellular fluid or from the low calcium concentration to the high concentration of the calcium ion so it is the primary active transport where the energy has been provided directly from the breakdown of this atp secondary active transport uniport sodium glucose co transport it is also known as uniport transport because the movement of the substance occurs in the same direction and it is the secondary active transport because the energy is not provided directly from the breakdown of the atp but the energy has been provided once the sodium ion or the ionic difference is generated between the cell membrane via the movement of different ions then it will provide the energy to this uh, carrier protein for the transport of sodium glucose like substances so here you are seeing that the movement of the glucose occurring from the less glucose concentration 
to the high or the more glucose concentration and it against the concentration gradient so it is the active transport but here the energy is provided by the uh, difference or the ionic difference across the cell membrane so it is the secondary active transport here energy never been provided via the breakdown of this ATP molecule now here the sodium ion binds to the sodium binding side and uh, glucose substance binds to the glucose binding side and this glucose is released inside the cell and sodium ion also release in the inside the cell so here the movement of the both the substances occurring in a same direction so it is known as co-transport or the uniport now secondary active counter transport or it is also known as antiport sodium hydrogen counter transport so here you are clearly seeing that this hydrogen ion and sodium ion movement occurs in opposite direction so two ion move in a opposite direction so this is known as counter transport or the antiport transport or the antiporter osmosis and osmotic pressure what is osmotic pressure amount of pressure which is required to stop the osmosis so here we are putting the semi permeable membrane we are filling water in this section and we are filling non diffusible substances for example sodium chloride solution in this uh, area all right and uh, what will happen there is a movement of the water across this semi permeable membrane is occurring now what is osmotic pressure amount of the pressure which we have to give from this side to stop the movement of the water across the semi permeable membrane it is known as osmotic pressure one osmol is equal to one gram mole weight of a solute so what do you mean by one osmol it is the one gram mole weight of the solute normal osmolarity of extracellular fluid is 300 milli osmol now what is the difference between osmolarity and osmolality osmolarity means one osmol of solute in one liter of water and osmolality means one osmol of solute in one kilogram of water so this is the difference between osmolarity and osmolality in the osmolarity one osmol of solute in one liter of water and in osmolality one osmol of solute in one kilogram of water now what is one osmol it is the one gram mole weight of a solute the osmotic pressure extend depend upon the number of particles and not by the mass of the particles the movement across the semi permeable membrane occurs in the osmosis it depends only on the number of particles it never by the mass of the particles now the tonicity and the normal cell volume how the cell remains in a same volume status when the intracellular fluid 300 milli osmol so it is a non penetrating to any type of solutes so it is known as isotonic because the extracellular fluid concentration and the intracellular fluid concentration is same so there is no any type of movement of solute across the cell membrane so here there is a no any type of change occurring inner side of the cell and outer side of the cell substances or the solutes now when the osmolarity of the extracellular fluid reduced to 200 milli osmol the cell becomes swells because the movement of the water occur from extracellular fluid inside the intracellular fluid and there will be the swelling of the cell so the volume of the cell become increased because here there is a osmolarity of the intracellular fluid is 300 milli osmol all right and here whenever we are putting a cell where is the extracellular fluid osmolarity is 400 milli osmol the water will be coming out of the cell as there is a inner side of the cell the osmolarity remains 300 milli osmol and in this condition of the hypertonic solution the cell shrinks 
and in the conditions of hypotonic solution the cell becomes swells so inside the our body there is a isotonicity has been maintained so cell remains in a normal cell volume how do they take substances in and out so endocytosis and exocytosis the when the substance moves inner side of the cell membrane it is known as endocytosis and when the substance movement occurs outer side of the cell membrane then it is known as exocytosis first of all the invagination of the cell membrane occurs surround the substance later from the both direction the cell membrane becomes joined with each other and the part of the cell membrane detach and it forms a vesicle and the vesicle has been released inside the intracellular compartment of the cell so this is the process of endocytosis now the exocytosis inside the exocytosis this vesicle or the pouch joins with the cell membrane and there is a secretion of substances out of the cell so this is the exocytosis how do they take larger particles and it is known as via the process of pinocytosis it is also known as cell drinking and it is a clathrin mediated process how do they digest unwanted material it is known as phagocytosis or it is also known as cell eating i already described phagocytosis mechanism in detail please try to visit my blood physiology lectures so this is the summary part it is just to revise whatever we learnt in the today's lecture and if you like this lecture please try to share with your friends